You're listening to The Jake Asman Show on the SportsNet Radio Network. Presented by Rocket Mortgage. Live from the O'Reilly Auto Parts studios, here's Jake Asman. With the second pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. I think the pro day really helped solidify the decision. Um, just having, having time to leading up to the pro day to spend time with him on the Zoom call. Obviously, have done a lot of work on him uh, prior prior to even the season end. Just watching the tape and and watching his his unbelievable uh, junior year. But I think I think Dennis ultimately that that pro day really really cemented it. That was Jets GM Joe Douglas reacting to the commissioner calling Zach Wilson's name Thursday night. So Zach Wilson goes number two to the Jets. And the Jets, over the weekend, I thought, had one of the best drafts they've had in at least a decade. And that's not hyperbole. The Jets had a plan, and they actually executed that plan. It felt like for the first time since Rex Ryan and Mike Tannenbaum that the Jets truly have competent management, competent coaching. And we saw that on full display. Over the weekend, I thought the Jets hit an absolute home run over the weekend. We could start with the Wilson pick. That was obvious, though. We spent months on this show talking about Zach Wilson going to the Jets and why that was the right pick. But it's the fact that after the Wilson pick, they then went out there and were aggressive in helping Zach Wilson, putting him in a position to have success, putting him in a position where he doesn't have to do it all by himself like Sam Darnold had to. The move to go up and trade for Elijah Vera Tucker. The Jets traded up with the Vikings, moved up nine spots from 23 to 14 to take the guard at a USC, to take a guy that could play both guard and tackle that many people consider the best guard in the draft. That was a, that was a brilliant move by Joe Douglas of the Jets. Brilliant. The Jets now are set up for the next decade to have one of the best offensive lines the best left side of the offensive line in the league. Mekhi Becton's already a top five tackle. You look at Elijah Vera Tucker and Daniel Jeremiah called him the safest pick in the draft. Called him a future all pro. That's a move you make because you're serious about actually giving your young quarterback a chance. Everything they didn't do for Sam Darnold, they're doing now for Zach Wilson. And it wasn't just a Tucker pick. And that's a great move. I know they spare me that, oh, they overpaid. They gave up two third-round picks. Nobody cares what you gave up if the player ends up being great for you. And that's what Tucker's going to be for the Jets. All right, nobody cares that the Jets traded a second-round pick and a fourth-round pick in 2007 to move up to draft Darrell Revis. You hit on the sure thing. You hit on the player. That's all that matters. And that's what the Jets have done, giving Zach Wilson a chance for success. And another sign that things are finally different with this organization that's been a train wreck for a decade, is that they stuck to their conviction and took a great player at pick 34. It would have been really easy for Joe Douglas at the beginning of the second round to trade out and recoup some picks. Instead, he doubles down on offense with a third straight pick and takes Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss. Elijah Moore was my favorite pick the Jets made this weekend because it just showed you they're serious about helping Zach Wilson. It showed you that they're serious about actually giving this kid a chance to be successful. If Zach Wilson doesn't work out for the Jets, then you want it to be because he just wasn't good enough. Not the Sam Darnold thing where you still don't know what the guy is after three years. You got to find out what this kid is. Give him every chance to be successful. And getting Elijah Moore, who Mel Kuyper had as a top 16 player, they're at pick 34. I mean, that's a no-brainer. That's a move you make when you're serious about protecting your young quarterback. And spare me with the, oh, but Jake, the defense, they got to improve the defense in the draft. They won two games this past year. Not going to fix every hole with one draft. And the Jets at the 32nd ranked offense two years in a row. And the same media that might be criticizing them because they went offense with their first four picks. They're the same people that complained about the lack of weapons protection for Sam Darnold. So the Jets did exactly what they should do. They go out there address offense, try and score points, which is a novel concept the Jets haven't learned over the last 10 years, that you need to actually score points to win games in the NFL. 
I know it's just it's just like rocket science to determine that, but it's true. I mean, they had they had a draft that makes you feel so confident about Joe Douglas and about Robert Sala. I mean, the approach early on was help this young quarterback and then draft guys on defense. They used their final six picks on defense to try and you know get pieces that fit Sala's scheme, Sala's defense, guys that the coaching staff can develop, and that's what they did. I mean, another great pick by the Jets that everyone you know is praising as far as like the draft folks is they took a running back at a North Carolina and Michael Carter in the fourth round. They they had him as a third round pick. They were shocked he was there at the beginning of round four. And that and they did exactly what you should do in the draft. You wait on the running back and you get a stud in Michael Carter that is going to immediately help your team in 2021. You know who who he reminds me of? Leon Washington. Guess who made the pick for the Jets? Leon Washington. How cool is that? And then you had Labertius Coles making the Elijah Moore pick for the Jets. I mean, look, we'll find out how these guys are when they actually take the field. But as far as like executing a plan, having like a sense of direction as an organization, it just feels different with this team. And we'll talk to some experts on this show throughout the week. We'll talk to Russell Brown from Cover One Scouting at 40 past this hour, get his thoughts on what the Jets did. But they have a direction. They have a plan. They used free agency to improve their defense. Right, they added Carl Lawson, Sheldon Rankins, Lamarcus Joyner, Vinnie Curry, Jared Davis. They'll get C.J. Mosley back. Quinn Williams is going into his third year. He'll be better. Richard Sherman and Steven Nelson are still out there to play corner. They could bring back Brian Poole. So they're not done, but the defense has already been drastically improved. Now it's all about giving Zach Wilson a chance to succeed. Because you could have the best roster in the world. You're not winning a championship unless you hit on the quarterback. And the only way you can hit on the quarterback is if you give him a chance to actually be great. And I think getting Elijah Vera Tucker, adding Elijah Moore, adding Michael Carter, those three guys are going to help Zach Wilson right away. And all of a sudden, you look at the Jets' offense. You know, they're not the you know 98 Vikings by any stretch or the 07 Patriots, but Corey Davis, Denzel Mims, Jamison Crowder, Elijah Moore, Makai Becton, Elijah Vera Tucker, all of a sudden, you're not a laughing stock. I mean, overnight, the Jets went from having one of the worst offenses in the sport the last couple of years to having something that is respectable. And that's all you could ask for because this is not a one-year fix for Joe Douglas. No one's saying the Jets are going to the playoffs this year. But you look at the 49ers a couple of years ago, they went from being the youngest team in the NFL, had a couple of good drafts in a row, and then they built a really good team that went to the Super Bowl two years ago. And Salah was a big reason why that team was so good on defense. Now he's here with the Jets, and the Jets seem to be applying the same principles of the Niners. And Joe Douglas learned from Ozzie Newsom and Eric DaCosta in Baltimore. Saw what the Eagles did in Philly where they won a championship. And it's the second year in a row where I feel really good about the draft the Jets had. And last year's draft was successful for them. So I really thought the Jets were the big winners, maybe out of any team over the weekend. You could talk about the Jets draft. I love what the Browns did. I thought Jacksonville had a strong draft. I thought the Giants did really well with their trade down, acquiring picks for next year and still going to go a good player in Kadarius Tony at 20. A lot to like from this draft. But I thought the Jets really made a statement by just executing a plan, having a plan for Zach Wilson and going out there and actually doing what it takes to help the kid, help him find success. I mean, we talked about it on this show copious amounts of times, right? Everything they didn't do for Sam Darnold, do the exact opposite for Zach Wilson. Well, they're all off to a good start. And how about this for the Jets? This status is glaring. So the Jets from 2000 to 2019, they took a total of two offensive linemen in the first round. And that was in the same draft, 2006, to Brickishaw Ferguson and Nick Mangold. I'd say that worked out pretty well for the Jets, right? say it worked out pretty good for them. Joe Douglas has now done two drafts as the Jets GM. He's already matched that total with two offensive linemen in the first round. Becked in last year, trade-up for Elijah Vera Tucker this year. And the trade-up for Tucker is brilliant. I don't, I don't care what any of the draft chart people say. you got a proven commodity in Elijah Vera Tucker, the safest prospect in this draft. I don't care what the third-round picks are. Give me the guy that's going to help my rookie quarterback from day one. 
Jets' left side of the offensive line is going to be among the best in football for years going forward now. That's why you be aggressive. You accumulate all these draft capital. You, know, you accumulate all these picks. So you can be aggressive and make that move and get instant help for your young quarterback. The Jets going all in on offense should have been done three years ago for Sam Darnold. But Mike McCagden was maybe the worst executive ever. So now the Jets are actually doing what they should have done for Sam, doing it for Zach Wilson. And that should excite you if you're a fan of the Jets. Now, as far as Zach Wilson, here's my question. What jersey number is Zach Wilson going to wear? Because I need to uh, purchase a Zach Wilson jersey. And there's a certain website that I use for jersey purchasing that already has Zach Wilson jerseys available. They have number one Zach Wilson jerseys available. Problem is, according to Zach Wilson, he still doesn't know what jersey number he's going to be wearing with the Jets. Yeah, I haven't picked a jersey number yet. You know, I think we're kind of thinking about that in the, in the, in the future. You know, we're not sure uh, what we're going to do there. Well, Zach, when you decide, please let me know so I can make a purchase from a certain website overseas. A certain website that can provide me another jersey that I hope I don't have to toss in the trash pile like I did my Sam Darnold, Jamal Adams, Le'Veon Bell jerseys over the last couple of years. So that's my hope for Zach Wilson and the Jets. But overall, I think if you're a Jet fan, great draft. Joe Douglas has a plan. Now it's about continuing to improve this team and building around this quarterback and giving them a chance to win. Agree or disagree on the Jets? 800-224-2004 is the number if you want to weigh in. Also, tweet me your thoughts at Jake Asman on Twitter. That's Jake A-S-M-A-N. And we'll read the best responses over the air. Coming up next, let's get into the latest with the Aaron Rodgers situation. There's too many people that are saying, oh, this is like Brett Favre all over again with the Packers. No, it's not. We'll get to Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers coming your way next right here. On a Monday morning, Jake Asman with you, Sports Map Radio. Let's go. Pushing the 